Floss Tube friends, it's Anne. Today is Thursday, June 29th. Uh, I hope all of you are well. I am checking in with uh, almost the end of the month, a uh, little update to talk to you guys about what I've been working on. So uh, everything is good here. We are headed into the 4th of July holiday week weekend here in the United States. My husband is actually gonna take a couple of days off. So we are gonna be at home. We just don't have any specific plans, but um, he's gonna get a couple of days off, which will be really, really nice. He's got crazy hours right now. So uh, that's, that's good, that's a good thing. So I'm hoping for a little bit of stitchy time this weekend and uh, I have to work Monday, but uh, I'm gonna try to take Tuesday, which is the 4th, the 4th of July off. So wanted to get you up to date on what I've been working on. Um, the last four day, five days, today's the fifth day, I've been working on my Village of Hawk Run Hollow, block three. So I am so close to having this block finished and I am so happy about it. So I have the building done. The only thing I have left to do, which I misspoke last time I shared this with you guys, I don't, I didn't have the lettering done. So I have to go in and fill that in. So you can see I've got the first two words done and I need to finish the sign. But otherwise, everything else, block three, is complete. I love how the block came out. It was really fiddly. I mean, this is basically a full coverage. Sorry, the thread hanging there. Um, but I think totally worth it in, in the end. Finished up the flag, the birds, all the back stitching is done. So like I said, just this left to finish. So my hope is I can get this done today. I've got today and tomorrow to work on this for my six day rotation for the ivory needle challenge. And if I can, I'd like to get the next frame um, you know, the outer part um, blocked out for block four. And I have a little bit of charting to do on that one to chain up, change up the signage to make it personalized, which you guys may remember I'm doing with this one. Change the church and the city hall town name I've changed as well. So the boarding house will also get a name change to my Graham's name. My Graham's family had, I, from what I understand, this is a Scotch-Irish thing. Um, no one in the family was called by their given name. So like my uncle Frank, his actual name was David. And my Graham was always went by Jane and her name was Sarah. So yeah, a little confusing, but I'm going to use her, uh, the name she went by. I'm going to use Jane rather than Sarah because that's what I think of her as and I, her family calls her that as well. She's always Aunt Jane or Grandma Jane or whatever, but um, anyway. So I do have a little bit more time. My plan is to have this completely finished up. Um, if I get it done, I will take a picture on the 30th as to my progress, how far I've you know, gotten, if I've gotten this finished and the other frame done, um, I'll post a picture at the end of this little video clip so you guys can see how that's looking. But pretty close, pretty close. Uh, so there is that. I have also been trying to sneak in a little bit of extra time on two other projects uh, while I've been working on that. Um, the first one is my Star Weaver. I'll show you that picture again of the wizard heaven and earth designs story keep with artwork by tom cross you might remember i finished page one of three and a wee little bit so i am now working on page two i have moved into the blue confetti and that is what i am working on so far this section to here Basically, this little area right in here is all more of this plain blue. 
So I'm kind of working back and forth. I'm filling in like a square of that and then I'm doing a couple of colors of the confetti. So one, two, three, four. So this right here is about halfway down, not quite halfway down page two. It is maybe that to there will get me to the halfway point. So I've been trying to put in some time on this just to kind of keep momentum going on it because uh, I want to get it done. And I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, but that's where I am on it. Uh, and then the other thing I've been working on in the evenings, I've been just doing like a half an hour. My husband and I will go sit downstairs after we do dog chores and outdoor things and whatever after dinner. And um, I don't, our downstairs is not where I normally stitch, so I don't have my magnifier um, or my stand or anything like that. So I've just been working on this little Mill Hill kit, Pikes Peak Santa from the Rocky Mountain Santa series. And I have gotten all of the cross stitch finished and I'm working on beading, which you can see. I'm not quite halfway through. I've got his coat done here and the upper part. I need to do this half of his coat. There's a lot of beads right here. There's a bunch of beads in the eagle wing and his hat. And then of course I have to do the little mustache and beard, which are not beaded, they are just stitched. So I'm hoping that I might have this done over the next week. So I might have that to show you the next time that I do a little video update. That's been fun. I can totally see why they're addictive and why people want to do whole sets and whole series and yeah, really like that. That's been a lot of fun to do. So looking forward, um, starting the 1st, from the 1st through the 6th of July, I will, will be working on the next uh, thing. Since it's a new month, the Ivory Needle Challenge rotations kind of starts fresh. So I'm moving a couple of things around this month. Um, I think I had originally told you guys how I was going to be working things in my last video. Um, I've moved my under the sea sow a little bit later in the month to work on that because I want to participate in the cross stitch finish lines dog days of summer sow and I'll have more on that next time I update because we'll get a little closer it doesn't kick off till the 14th of July so it'll be you know the month's half over I'll already have worked on a couple other projects so one of the prompts though is to work on something that has to do with S is for seashore, so sea, ocean, beach, all of that. So under the sea, yeah, that's perfect. So I'm going to wait and pull that into the rotation mid-month. Um, and so what I'm going to start off the month with, uh, the first six days, again, is another heaven and earth. This is the mini shoot the moon, no background. Artwork by Lee Ann Seed. And I just started this last month, so I don't have very much done, but... You can see, I started at the top corner and I'm doing this on a gradient dye fabric that I did dyed myself and then uh, just doing it with black for the silhouette. So that is where I am on that. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting that one back out. It goes along fairly quickly. Um, I know that um, it's not like a true heaven and earth design just because it's not full coverage, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, hoping to get a little bit of traction in on that. Um, oh, and I guess I should say 28 count. I'm doing this one over one on 28 count. It's a 28 count even weave. And then um, just the last little footnote, uh, I had a, a several of you, many of you, who commented on the full coverage um, stitch along in 2018. More information on that to come uh, later this fall once I get the Facebook group set up. I'm gonna run it through that. Uh, it will be, um, oh, and I did have someone ask, it's not just Heaven and Earth Designs. It, it, it's any full coverage so 
no matter what size, no matter what uh, company, as long as it's a full coverage piece where you're covering the fabric with stitches, good to go. Um, I think, so do you guys remember this that I started? This little tiny piece, of course I don't have the, I don't have the pattern with me, but this is the horse, this is the winter, uh, winter's encounter. And I was doing it one over one on 28 count. I'm kind of thinking I might want to restart it. It's just got the first 300 stitches in. But I realized when I was working on uh, the a stitching shelf, which I was working on last week just a little bit, I really, really, really like it over the 25 count and I really like the magic guide. Um, so as soon as Stitch from Stash is over, which is two days from now, I'm going to order myself a big old piece of that. Um, and I think we start this. I'm, I'm toying with that idea. I don't know, I haven't completely decided. Maybe I'll stitch on this just a little bit to see if I still like it, don't like it, whatever, but I'm leaning that way. Um, so that will be one that I will definitely be working on next year during that full coverage style. So that's it for today. Um, I will check back in with you guys in another, you know, five or six days. It'll probably be after the 4th of July. Uh, just to show you what I've got going. And so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, uh, getting a lot of stitching done and, um, enjoying the weather in whatever corner of the world you live in. So until I talk to you then, be kind to yourself, be good to others. Hey everyone, it's Anne. Today is uh, Wednesday, July 5th. Um, it is middle of the week, the day after July 4th here in the United States. Uh, I hope everybody had a great celebration. Uh, we had really a low key day, which was fine with me. Um, where our house sits, we're kind of up on a bluff. And so our town does a fireworks display over the Rio Grande and we don't have to go into town for it cause we can just sit on our back porch and see everything from there. So that's what we did. Um, my husband and I had kind of a quiet day. It was hot here. So we did just you know, stuff around the house, went out, did some exercise stuff. I went for a run in the morning and then he went for a bike ride. Um, so we were pretty much in the house by about 10, just puttered, did some stuff, you know, nice and relaxing day. So that was nice. Um, I got some stitching done and I thought I would get kind of caught up on where I am right now and show you guys what I've been working on. So going to hop right on into it. Uh, the first thing is a finish. I had been working in bits and bobs on the Pikes Peak Santa uh, from the Mill Hill um, Rocky Mountain Santas series. And I have him finished. He is not fully FFO'd and so I have a little like edges here that I want to trim after I put the felt on the back but I need to it's not really helpful is it need to do that you guys I think can see there's quite a bit of beads on him I love how the bald eagle turned out and this little holly bush. He's super cute. So that's going to go on the tree this year for my husband, which I um, think he will enjoy. He's kind of outdoorsy. He used to, his original degree is in ornithology, like wildlife biology. So it's got a bird, it's got mountain theme. Figure how, how off can I be? So super cute. Um, Loved how it turned out. I think it's great. So there is that. That is a finish to kick off July, which can't beat that, right? All good. Uh, so what I've been working on for the Ivory Needle Challenge for the first six days, um, I've got today and tomorrow to, to work on this part of the rotation uh, for this whip, is the Shoot the Moon Mini. 
So artwork is by Lee Ann Seed, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, and this is the no background version, if you might remember. And I am to this point on it. So this right here is the bottom of the first page, and this right here is the side of the first page. There's three pages, uh, I believe it's three pages and an extra column across, and then I think three full pages and maybe half a page down. It's, it's vertically oriented, it goes this way. So doing this on 28 count uh, Lugana, one over one, just using good old basic DMC black. And I'm uh, really enjoying that. So you can see from the picture, kind of, the glare will go away, there we go. So this part right here is this here. And there's a bit more of the tree branch that comes out, but this portion is, there's almost no stitching on it whatsoever. So I am closing in on the equivalent of a page finish. Obviously it's not a full coverage page finish, but um, I think I can get this done, the first page done in the next two days. And that would be a really great stopping point and kind of give me an idea about how long it will take to do this entire piece. So that's my goal. I'm gonna, we've got a bunch of stuff going on the next two days, so more limited stitching time, but I am gonna try to get that done for this rotation, and then I know where I stand going into next month. Next up, after I finish those six days, so through July 6th on that, I'm going to be picking back up Star Weaver for days 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Days 7 through 12 for this rotation. This is where I stopped last time. Had not worked on this in three or four days. So I've got six days to focus on this. I would love to get halfway through the page, which is going to take me down to about there. We'll see if I can do that. There is some plain, just this dark blue blocks left right here and right here, but everything else from here down is basically all confetti. The story keeps super cute, but you know, it's an image compressed into kind of a small space. And so as a result, to keep the detail, you wind up with a lot of the confetti sections. So. That's okay, you know, I had smooth, easy sailing all of page one and part of page two, so there's only three pages. I kinda, kinda can't complain about that, can I? So that is up next. Um, be working on that in the next several days. And then I have two other pieces that I'm working on, or I have had worked on this past weekend, just to get some stitches in and make some progress on, but I, I don't really have any, um, they're not part of my normal rotation. So the first is actually a new start. It is a freebie from the Primitive Hair. It's this one right here for Lamas, which is on August 1st. It's a Celtic celebration, so uh, this year, August 1st. It's sort of the Harvest Grain Festival um, not a full harvest festival, but the actual grain festival, which is why they've got wheat. Uh, freebie from them. You might remember that I did the um, Litha little ornament with the bee on it for the summer solstice. So i um, trying to get this one done in time to have it out for the August 1st festival day. And I changed up the colors a little bit. I, I thought this was a little, mm, I don't know, stark maybe is not the right word. I just wasn't totally happy with this cream colored background and the DMC colors. I mean, they're fine. There's no, nothing wrong with them. It's a very simple little design, but 
decided I wanted to do something a little bit different. So hauled out a scrap that I dyed for the shop. It's a 28 count linen. And then I went into my stash and I found a hand dyed colorway that was part of the summer stitchy box that just came. It's the Ship's Manor limited edition colorway. So I'm used, I used that for the letters right here. And then I used Winter Wheat from Color and Cotton for the star. I used Oxblood from Color and Cotton for this bottom border. And then I just got started on the wheat plant right there. And that is a gassed thread. Um, I don't know the color name. It was another, a limited edition one that came in the stitchy box. So I'm kind of trying to use up, itchy nose, sorry. Uh, kind of trying to use up things that I have in my stash. You know, one that I have one skein of. Um, I thought it's perfect for this. So I've got only other color you all haven't seen is dark dune which I'm going to use for the actual wheat itself so this is these will be the little stalks and this will be the wheat itself in here which I thought tied all of the colors together really nicely in that hand paint from ship's manor so yeah um not I mean this this is not a huge project it won't take me very long to finish it my plan is to finish it into a little cushion, just like the summer solstice one, and have that out on my little pretty table. Um, if you are interested in that particular series, um, I will link it below. And then you might also pop over to Gem Stitches videos if you don't watch her. Um, she's also worked up those, and she actually is the reason I'm working on them. I loved her finishes. Um, she just finished this one as well. Uh, it's not fully finished, but the stitching is done. And if you go back through her other videos, she has other ones throughout the year uh, that are very, very cute. I love how she finishes things. So if you're interested, I will also put a link to her channel below. Um, she did a really nice um, send off of um, Beverly. I'm sure you guys have heard about that, our loss in the stitchy community recently. Um, and Gemma has a really nice uh, display with some pretty things that she's done that's kind of where she has her memory candle that she's been lighting for Beverly. Really nice sentiment and beautifully done. So worth checking out if you have any interest at all. Finally, uh, I decided that what I would do on the days that I'm kind of, you know, I've got maybe an hour extra that I can work on something else when I'm not working on the ivory needle challenge rotation pieces. So I used the good old random number integer generator and I've selected either a, I, I have my list of smaller projects and sort of medium sized projects. Uh, just listed, you know, one through 13. And I let the number generator pick a project for me and I just pulled that out and I'm gonna work on it until it's done and lather, rinse, repeat until I get some of those smaller pieces done. So no specific, you know, like time, I'm trying to finish them up. I'm just gonna work on them as I have time and then they will get finished and I can check things off my whip list. So what the random integer generator picked was this from Hands on Design. It's the winter solstice pattern. I have both of these started. Um, I started them during Mania this year. I'm doing them on exactly the same piece of fabric, but I am going to, I am counting them as two separate pieces because I'm going to finish them completely separately. So the one that that the random number selector picked was the solitude one right there. So I am doing this on a 28 count even weave from Witchelt, which I think is called Stormy Sky, something like that. I have the tag downstairs, so do not have it with me. And you will excuse the 
hanging thread. Here is where I am. The pattern calls for some wigs dye works and some gentle arch threads. I didn't have all of the colors of all of them, so I'm substituting some things out. Um, I'm using all gentle arch threads, so I've got some like the black crow that's the rooftop. That is actually what I'm using there. Um, and there was a lot of brown in this to me. So I am changing out, you see, I'm doing the, the border that surrounds the piece. I'm doing that in that kind of sage green. And I'm gonna be changing up the section that has the lettering and doing that with this green for the letters, I believe, is what I decided. I also have like a Christmas red. I can't remember, I have notes downstairs, but um, I'm gonna switch that out on both of them to make it a little more holiday-ish, um, but not crazily so. So that is where I am on that one. Again, you know, just working on it, kind of picking it up, putting it down as I go, just to work on it. Uh, so that is, about where I am for the upcoming week. Um, you heard about my plans, which are to work on Star Weaver once I've got two more days done on the Shoot the Moon piece. And I think that's it for plans. You, I mean, you see what I'm working on. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who commented um, either here or on my Instagram account about my Chatelaine choice. Um, the winner was the Desert Mandala, so I am going to be starting that. But for those of you who voted for Winter Water Garden, and there were a lot of you, um, I'm going to be starting that as my January 1st New Year New Start. So it will get started in six months. Let's see how far I get on the Desert Mandala uh, over the July through December um, month. Thank you to all of you who also suggested that I just go ahead and, you know, start both of them. Hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, just to finish up really quick. Um, so thank you to everybody who voted for that. Um, be starting the Desert Mandala on the 25th, I believe it is. Um, my birthday is not till the 27th, but we'll run that through the 25th through the end of the month. So if you've got a Chatelaine and you'd like to um, play along with us, I know Lisa over at Lisa Stitching and such is going to also work on a Chatelaine during that period. She's got one already started, but that's fine. Um, if you're interested in that, love to have you just, you know, hang out in virtual reality and do some stitching. So um, yeah, so I think that's it for this go round. Uh, I will talk to you guys probably in another four or five days, um, maybe after the weekend even, uh, just to share with you my progress. So until I talk to you guys then, have a great stitching week. Bye. Hey guys, it's Anne. Uh, I wanted to come back and do a quick little update um, for those of you who had asked some questions about uh, my horses from my 20 random things about me video. So if you've gotten this far in my compilation video, there's no more stitching. And so if that's not your thing, I will see you next time. So thank you for watching if um, I've run out of interesting stitching things to talk about. Uh, if you wanna hear a few more details about my three boys, here they are. I thought I would just kinda of do these in chronological order, um, almost chronological order. So let's start with my boy Digger. Digger was my first adult horse. I got him as a three-year-old. Um, he is a Missouri Fox Trotter. He was one of a set of twins, which um, is fairly rare in the horse world. Um, both he and his sister survived, as did his mom, um, usually one horse out of that three doesn't make it. He was the small twin, um, perfect size for me. He was only about 850 pounds. He's 14, 
two, if you know horses, that's pretty short. Um, beautiful, beautiful boy. I adored this horse. Um, he had been supplemented um, as a bottle baby. They had given him bottle feedings because his mom was trying to feed two, which are, is not normal for horse births. And so as a result, he had some issues with personal boundaries in that he didn't think anyone needed to have them. Um, he just, he loved to be as close as possible to you, which sometimes was not the greatest thing. He was a little bit disrespectful of boundaries, and that is a hard thing when you have an 850 pound animal who wants to sit in your lap. Um, he was very good about letting you reset boundaries with him. Like he never took anything personally. You could um, whack him in the end of the nose when he had been trying to pull gloves out of your pocket for the umpteenth time. And it, it never bothered him. Nothing bothered this horse. I worked very, very hard with him to get him absolutely fearless. And it was not a difficult task because this horse had a monster ego. He thought he was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, I did most of his, I had him with a trainer for his first 60 days and then I did all of his trail work with him. The guy I bought him from, luckily, who was a big man, I'm 5'4 and about 127 pounds. Um, the guy I bought him from was probably 6'2 and probably 225, and he was smart, and he never got on this little horse. He just would have been the worst thing for this youngster. Um, so I did the bulk of his training. The problem was that the guy I bought him from had done tons and tons and tons of arena work with him. He just drilled the fun out of it. Imagine a really smart kid who you ask to do the exact same task every day because that's what the curriculum says he has to do. Diggs knew what he needed to learn. He picks stuff up really quick. My problem with him was he was not a horse you could teach in an arena. He just checked out. He just got, he was like, I'm here to be bored. I'm not going to pay attention. And so he didn't. On the other hand, if I took him out on trail and tried to teach him something, he usually got it on the second try. Um, it was very rare with him that I needed to repeat something a third or fourth time for him to understand. Now, he might be personality-wise a little more difficult. Um, he wanted you to prove to him that you were smarter than he was. And if you did that, he would do anything for you. Um, he went through a mounted police course in the Phoenix area. Um, the cops basically told me that they would write me a check for him if he had been bigger. They just, they didn't have any officers that could have ridden him. They had one, I think one female on the force and she was six feet tall. Um, so he kind of missed his calling there because uh, this horse, he would, he didn't care. Balloons, guns, stuff blowing in the wind. He loved picking up power tools. If you were like we were mending fences, he would pick power tools up and he would see if he could figure out how to make the parts move in his mouth, like push the lever on the side. Um, he did not transfer very well. I, when I got to the point that I decided he needed to go to a home where he was going to be the only horse, um, I'm really glad that my friend Judy has him. He is her go-to boy. He will do anything for her. He moves cows. He goes on trail rides. He I, Anything she asks him to do, he will try. Um, but she understood he was quirky. And either you found, found his smarts brilliant and fun and interesting or you found him a complete pain in the rear those were his two extremes you drove my husband nuts i loved him um he and i rode all over the mountains in utah when i had him i rode him here i rode him with youngsters um youngster horses where he was the old horse at five never put a foot wrong just brilliant I love this little this little guy. I cried and cried and cried when I gave him up, but he was so unhappy not being the number one horse that it really was better for him. And sometimes that's that's the responsible choice you have to make. 
So here he is. This will give you an idea of his size. This is one of my favorite pictures. We had such a good day. We rode all up in the mountains outside of Salt Lake City. And that's pretty much how he would always hang out with me. He loved to just have his head over my shoulder. He loved to have hugs. So that was my boy Digger. Um, yeah, I could go on and on with him. In general, I could go on and on with all of my boys, but I'm trying to give you guys a quick overview. Um, our other horse is the horse that we got from my husband, um, who was not someone who grew up riding, but he took lessons from an excellent teacher and then wanted to ride endurance with me. So we got Sam, half Morgan, half Arabian. And when we went to interview Sam, he was probably 350 pounds overweight. He is not overweight in this picture. He's just a big boy. Um, he had been living with a pig um, in the back lot of these people's house and he was horribly out of shape and way overweight. And when my, we tried him out, he was the perfect horse for my husband because he was really kind of pokey, but you know, he was hauling around a lot of extra weight. And once we got the weight off of him, dude became a machine. He loved to compete. Awesome work ethic. This is my husband on him. We're up in the mountains behind our house here at the volcanic caldera. Um, this is a ride that we did up there. So he and my husband had the work relationship and he understood that he and my husband worked together. Um, he used to give my husband fits. He was just, he hated to be last. He always wanted to be first. Going out at a race, he would sometimes, I mean, he would be bucking and snorting and just barely on the edge of control with my husband. The two of them had a lot of disagreements while we rode. Definitely an alpha horse and um, just a huge personality. He and my husband, like I said, had one relationship. Sam and I were completely different. He thought that we were maybe dating. Um, he was, I couldn't really ride him. He was so big for me. But when I did ride him occasionally, he was very careful that I stayed centered up on top of him, that I wasn't sliding around up there. He was our go-to horse if we had little kids come over. He was so respectful and so gentle of them, this massive horse. Um, and we could put the littlest kid up there and he would walk super slow, super quiet, like he was on eggshells, and make sure that little kid sat right between his ears he was so good with them. He just, uh, he was a darling personality. Um, here he is giving my brother-in-law the stink eye. My brother-in-law, they were taking pictures um, when the, they came to visit us. And Sam did not like um, other people having time together with us because he and I dated as far as he was concerned. You can see I'm standing He's actually standing in a hole, and you can see how much bigger he is than I am. So he was 16 too, and about 1,200 pounds by the time we got the worst of the weight off of him. Beautiful, sweet boy. He would do anything for me. I could walk with him with no lead rope and no halter on, and he would just stay right, right here with his nose right here, and he would stop when I would stop, and he would turn when I would turn. He would come immediately when he was called. I never had to halter him for giving him his meds. He was just, he tried very, very hard. And I think that was part of his Morgan um, genetics. So I loved him because he and I, you know, had a great, had a great dating relationship. He was, he was very good at horse hugs and just a super friendly personality. Sweet, sweet boy. And then finally, I'm going to talk about my boy, Ben. Um, this is me and Ben at one of the rides we did the very first year I had him. This is on Antelope Island in Salt Lake. In the Great Salt Lake, there's an island that has antelope and buffalo on it. And he's got his head up because there's a buffalo like off picture. We were riding on this ledge, and the buffalo's off here. When I got Ben... Um, the gal I bought him from, 
Ben understood go, Ben did not understand stop. So we worked for a year on stopping, just stopping. We would just trot in circles in the ring and I would ask him to stop and then we would trot again and I would ask him to stop and repeat, repeat, repeat every week on Tuesday afternoons for an hour. I mean, he was perfectly trained in terms of being able to be ridden, but he just had not gotten breaks apparently in his, in his time. Um, so full Arabian, um, his grandfather actually is the horse who played the black in the black stallion. And Ben looks absolutely nothing like him. Ben looks like a dark version of his little short coupled mama. And uh, I don't know, it was sort of like the genetic, the genetics of his dad just kind of passed a color, color coding over him, darkened him down um, to a black bay as opposed to a regular bay. And uh, that's pretty much all he got from his dad. This horse was one of the most level-headed horses I have ever met. He... Stuff really didn't bother Ben. He was much more of a beta horse. He was not interested in being in charge of a pack. He was not interested in being the head horse. Um, he did not do well if you didn't drive. He would try to be the driver if you were not paying attention. So he would be, he liked to test occasionally just to see if you were still paying attention. But if you were, then you know, he was good. He was fine with letting you drive. Um, I used to joke though that he was saddled with blonde me because when we would ride on trails, the trails are marked with the flag on the right. Maybe little flags, surveyor flag tapes on the trail to show you where you're supposed to go. And we'd come to a fork and I would see we needed to go that way. There was colored flags for our route, like let's say yellow ones as opposed to red ones. He would just see the flags. And until he picked up a flag ahead of us when we came to a V, if I cued him to go the way he thought we shouldn't be going, he would trot very slowly and he would have his head down and he would just be doing this the whole time like you poor, poor misguided driver. I have no idea why you're telling me to go this way. It's wrong. And he hated to backtrack, hated to backtrack. So tried very hard to be right all the time. So this is us um, at the Antelope Island ride. Excuse me, I dropped this other photo. Um, I never worried with Ben. He was always a very good eater drinker. He always pulsed down. He always stayed nice and calm. Um, this horse could not canter worth a lick. His canter was the bumpiest, most uncomfortable thing you have ever ridden. But if you could get him into his long trot, we used to call him Bubba because he had a very prominent lower lip and when he got relaxed when he trotted, that lower lip would get really floppy and he reminded me of Bubba Gump. So I could always tell when Ben was in his zone because his lip would get loose. And this is actually our very first ride together in Moab. Um, this was a really long day. I broke my tailbone five days before this ride. Cracked it on a wet uh, stable floor and I <laughs> luckily had a friend who rode in front of us and was our brakes because we were not far enough along in the brake training to be able to stop since I couldn't sit I just kind of was up in the saddle the whole the whole ride it was uh, yeah yeah so um, Ben, uh, I retired Ben because uh, he lost his eyesight completely when he was 15. He had developed milk bottle cataracts. And he only lasted, I think it was seven months after that. Uh, he just, he didn't do well when he didn't have a job. This was, this was his life. He loved to trot and go down the road. You can see his ears are up. He's all focused on doing his thing. So, yeah. So anyway, um, just a few photos of my boys so that you guys can take a look at them. Um, I hope that gave you an overview, um, was interesting, all of the above. 
anyway, if you have any questions about horse things or, you know, how we used to ride or any of my gear, because some of it's a little different, like his little renegade boots. I rode Ben barefoot for a lot of his years with me. Um, these are the boots we put on in really rocky areas. Um, yeah, hit me up. I'm always, I'm always happy to talk about horses, probably more than you really even care to know. But anyway, thought I would pop in today, do that really quick. So I'm going to get this video uploaded. And if you've made it through this far, look for more stitching stuff next week. So hope you guys are all good. Take care.